Dr. Phil. My name is Balin. I suffer with Tourette's syndrome. When I see my daughter hitting herself and screeching, it breaks my heart. People have accused you of faking this. It's real. I live like this every day. <laughs> You're bald. Sorry. You say I'm bald? Yeah, I noticed that last week. <laughs> have you had any second thoughts about going public? Oh, f you. Oh, f hi. It's time to show people the real me. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah. Just because I have Tourette's does not mean that I have to be trapped and kept away from society. <laughs> Oof. Let's do it. Good show, everybody. Here is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready to take care of you. I was scrolling through social media one day and I came across some videos of a very brave young woman posting about her daily struggles with something called Tourette syndrome. Now I started following her and thought she would make such a great teaching tool at many different levels. Balin was once an athlete who was active in swimming and basketball. She graduated high school with a 4.2 GPA and began to attend college last year to chase her dream of becoming a nurse. But this is Balin now. You're done. Now, Balin's parents, Julie and Alan, say once the pandemic hit, Balin drastically transformed from an independent young woman to needing care almost like a toddler. Julie and Alan learned that Balin had an aggressive form of Tourette syndrome, which rapidly progressed during her time at home in quarantine. A few months ago, Balin bravely posted videos of her disorder, which quickly resulted in three million followers. But the journey to TikTok fame hasn't been easy on Balin, and it certainly hasn't been easy on her parents. Balin was about seven years old when we first noticed a tick. She had this odd neck movement. Around 16, Balin started having more ticks. She would have odd noises or squeaks. Oof. Once COVID hit, ticks were coming a lot faster and more aggressively. I could hear her from the other room either tapping or screeching or she would just yell out a random word. Yeah, you fat slob. By the time we got her into the doctor, there were multiple movements. An arm flail followed by a neck, followed by kicking herself. Balin had a combination of Tourette's and OCD. Tourette's uh. causes Balin to do uncontrollable things, even simple things, eating a sandwich, she eats half the sandwich, wears part of the sandwich, and throws part of the sandwich. You're done. You're done. Coffee mugs. She would bang this off your head three times. But if it broke the second one, she would still hit you with the broken one the third time. There was a knife that one of the kids had left out, and I came down the stairs and saw her doing one of these, and she had to do it three times. She can't have this. She can't even have this. I don't want to have her hit herself in the throat, but even more, too, I also don't want to be stabbed in the neck. Cutting boards, the wood one, I, I, we don't leave that out either, because you don't want her to, she'll pick it up and bang it on her head like a lunch tray. It's no different than the safety you'd have for a toddler. The hardest part about Tourette's is when we go out in public, people will be like, you gotta be kidding me, what's wrong with you, are you on drugs? Around November of last year, Balin decided to do TikTok so that the world could better understand the life that she's living. My body's obviously, ah been ticking all day there's three point whatever million people following her on TikTok that want to hear her story but once the camera does stop rolling she's still in my living room struggling with it every day well it's good to meet you both you, you too uh how do you guys feel about 
Balin going this public about everything that's happening with her? I know it's been part of her life from a very early age, but now it's certainly amplified and she's going really public with it. I think we have mixed feelings. Um, a part of it is once you, once you put yourself out there, you can never take it back. I'm a little more of the concern about, there. obviously, once it go, you hit send, there's good, there's bad, but there's also evil. You so, can't unring that bell. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the trolls and that sort of thing while we're here today, because mm -hmm. I want to put that into a context. But there was a time when this was much less prominent in her life and didn't really affect her, her activities of daily living and her pursuit of her goals and dreams, right? Yes, sir. Correct. And do you think it was the pandemic and her having so much time with her thoughts and alone and all that really triggered this to the next level? Or do you think it was something else? I think it was a combination of, mm -hmm. of a lot of it because now as you're home and it's COVID, you're, there's no more school. As a parent, you notice your kid doing these behaviors and it's to the point now where those screeches become more frequent, more frequent, more frequent. Right. Just from the standpoint of a parent watching something that you can't really do anything about, how does this affect the two of you? Um, well, our relationship is really strong, so we're kind of on the same platform with everything. You know, she has made our lives and our family stronger. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's her journey to set forward, obviously, but in terms of, of us and the family, um, mm -hmm. we're, we're more in, like, protective mode and, you know, just making sure that we're all taking care of Balin. And with that comes some consequences to some other children, but we know. Right. Yeah. Is there how many children total? Si there's six, six total. Right. And she does absorb a lot of resources, a lot Absolutely. of time. Absolutely. Because... It was so abrupt, so quick. Um, it was kind of like, oh, now everyone's got to be on the back burner because we have got to address what's happening with Balin. We've got to get to this doctor. We've got to go here. It just became almost like a medical emergency. Right. And lifestyle-wise as well, uh, because there's OCD involved here, which is right. often comorbid yes. with Tourette's. And mm -hmm. you've said, for example, because of that element, if she was driving a car and even had a fender bender with someone, she has to do things in threes Please. right now. Yes, so sir. she might yeah. well back up and hit them twice more. <laughs> yes, sir. With a serious OCD, it's an irresistible impulse. It's like it's it's so strong within her that she couldn't resist it if her life depended on it. Uh -huh. It is an irresistible impulse, and you recognize that. Where if she like rear-ended somebody, she yeah. might have the irresistible impulse to back up and hit him again, and back up and hit him again. Yeah, mm -hmm. because she couldn't not do that, and you're concerned about that. Absolutely. Oh, highly concerned. I mean, when she smashes her head. Uh, her phone off her head, she has to do it two more times. So to sit there and watch her do that, it's painful. It's really painful. Mm -hmm. So we've come up with different techniques and mechanisms. You know, we put our hand in front of her or she'll say, you need to just put your hand in front of me right now so I can do it and I'll smash, you know. There's yeah. parts that are, but there's parts that are really fun too. Like she's starting to have fun with, with all of it because I think that she knows that this is what she has right now. And even though uh, she lets the go. trajectory of her life mm -hmm. is the goal is to seek as much treatment as possible, get as much help for her as possible, yeah. that one moment at a time, one day at a time, one second at a time for her. Yeah. And it's not all dismal future-wise. Uh, coming up, Balin says after going viral, some followers claimed she was faking it and just trying to get attention. So how did Balin react to that? We'll meet her and talk about that next. When I went to go see my first neurologist, I was doing everything from hitting my foot off my head to throwing things to kicking. He pointed at me when my mom was crying and he goes, look at her, she can't work. Oof. 
She can't drive. She can't go to school. She can't do anything. It was very heartbreaking. Tomorrow, surprising updates. Chase had dropped out of college and choked his psychiatrist. So what's happened since I saw you last? Well, from memorable guests. She was addicted to heroin and seven months pregnant. You not only delivered the baby, you... Catfished by the same man. He told me that he wanted to be honest with me. As opposed to before when he told you he was white and black and Craig and now Chris. That's tomorrow. Then on Friday. I need Dr. Phil. Everything in my body is shaking. Our mom and dad. You became concerned when he accidentally over-medicated her. Yes. Causing more anxiety. That's Friday. When I see my daughter ticking and hitting herself and screeching. Oof. Ah! You're not! It breaks my heart because there's nothing I can do as a dad to stop that. But I'm not quitting on my kid. There's no quit. You move forward and you make it better. Well, Julie and Alan say their daughter, Balin, suffers from Tourette syndrome, OCD, and depression but copes by raising awareness on social media. Balin says going viral has helped her gain confidence, although it still isn't easy. My name is, you're not, you're not. Mm -hmm. My name is Balin. I suffer with Tourette syndrome. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. I started showing myself on TikTok having Tourette's because other people were making me feel ashamed of who I was. When I went to go see my first neurologist, I was doing everything from hitting my foot off my head to throwing things to kicking. He pointed at me when my mom was crying and he goes, look at her. She can't work. Oof. She can't drive. She can't go to school. She can't do anything. It was very disheartening and heartbreaking. Even though my doctor said that to me, I got a job. It was really stressful. I actually had someone come in the store and refused service from me because they didn't want to catch my condition. I actually had a mental breakdown at work one day because no one else is helping me. No one's sticking up for me. I'm just left up here with hundreds of people who just are making fun of me. Then I was in a store one day and a girl took videos of me. I left the store that day in tears and I was like, where are those videos going? Yeah. I decided it was time for me to take my power yeah. back and not let people take advantage of who I am. This is a disability, and it's not a joke. People have accused me of faking Tourette's, but I've never heard one person say they want to live this way. I'm 19 years old, and I can't go to concerts. I wasn't able to go to my senior prom. I can't go out to dinner. I can't drive. But I have an amazing boyfriend. I'm living with my best friend next next year. I'm in college and I still plan on becoming a nurse. Just because I have Tourette's does not mean that I have to be trapped and kept away from society. <gasps> Oof. Well, Balin, it's good to meet you. It's good to meet you too. Hi. So, You're how, bald. how do you feel about being here today? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to show people how I live and that it's real. I live like this every day. <laughs> you. Um, and then I'm, I'm here to spread awareness about what I deal with. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. What made the decision, what helped you make the decision to go public with what you live with every day? I was tired of hiding who I was. It's time to show people the, the real me, who I am. Yeah. Do you still worry when you go out in public like now, for example, that people, don't... that people judge you? Yeah. What do you think people think? Um, that I'm crazy. Um, yeah. Are you? I... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Has anybody ever... Sometimes. <laughs> yes. yeah. Has anybody ever asked you that straight up? They, they've told me before that you'd be a lot prettier if you weren't crazy. Oh, you're bald. Yeah. Sorry. But you, you say I'm bald? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that last week. <laughs> she tells me every day. Yeah, yeah you're bald, day. you're bald, you're bald, you're bald. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What is the most empowering thing about being on the Internet 
and putting this out there for people to see. What's the most empowering thing about that? The comments I get, how much help it's reached other people. I get comments from people that are like, if I have my son or daughter come home with their boyfriend or girlfriend, how would I act towards them? And mm -hmm. I explain to them how they would act, just pretend like it's not there. I also get comments that tell me um, how inspirational I am and how they figured out that their kids have started to have ticks. Dino Williams. Have you had any second thoughts about going public? Actually, when I first posted my first video, I didn't expect it to blow up, and it kind of made me a little bit nervous because all of the comments were negative, mm -hmm. every single one of them. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, they were all, you're faking it, um, you're doing it for clout, your parents just want money. Ugh. So <clears throat> it's just comments like that, and it was really, it was really heartbreaking because I live with this every day. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. You're bald. Well, people have accused you of faking this and have said, then put up your medical records, and you've said... Wad it up. You said, I'm not going to do that. I did once. I let it really get to me, and my parents contacted me, and they were like, <laughs> take that down. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I, I couldn't agree with you all more. I've been doing this for 45 years. This is very real. They did share with us the information from the Mayo Clinic, uh, it's been properly diagnosed. It's 100% genuine. She is 100% genuine, brave, and courageous. Up next, Julie and Alan say most of their attention goes to Balin rather than their other uh, five children because uh, her Tourette's has gotten so bad. So how does the rest of the family handle it? We'll talk about that and what a day in the life is like uh, for Balin. We'll be right back. Anxiety, dementia, and... Our family, we have six children. Even though the kids are all very accepting of Balin's situation. Sometimes a little frustrated when the she... Hair pull. Pulls the hair. There's, like, almost some disability jealousy, so that makes me very sad. Everything is, like, mission Balin. Like, we've got to get this girl right. But right now, she needs us the most. Julie and Alan say out of their six children, Balin right now needs the most attention because life has been very challenging for her ever since her Tourette's worsened. Balin says she tries to focus on the positives and uses social media to share her story to bring more awareness. And, you know, Balin, one of the things that I've Hello. noticed and I see it in your videos, you know I follow you and I have been for a long time. Yeah, she calls her mom is like, <laughs> I think this is a fraud. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do a virtual and we'll see. She's like, sit next to me and we'll see if it's real. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I shared with Robin and uh, this is my wife, Robin, right here sitting Hi. there. Hi. And I, I, I came in, I, I told you, I said, I think this is one of the most courageous young women I've yes. seen. I was humbled by your yes. courage and what you were doing. And I so fight the stigma of these things and I thought my god I'm humbled by what she's doing and I was yeah. just so proud of what you were doing and am proud of what you're doing and I asked him to contact you and but I followed you for a while and then asked him to contact yeah. you to see if you would come and share and I, I love the fact that you and I know it's not always the way but I love the fact that you do have a, a sense of humor about some of this with yourself sometimes uh -huh. yeah. and um which really helps. I, it's got to, right? It does have to help because I have to live with this for a long time. There's no if, and, or but if it'll go away or if it'll dissipate. It's just I have to live the way I live, and I want to enjoy the way I live because yeah. it's my life, and I get one life. There are difficult tasks for Balin, um, like... You're done. Brushing You're done. your teeth and hair can be difficult, right? Yeah, recently my my mom has had to help me with brushing my hair. Yeah. Right now I can get myself dressed, so that's that's a bonus. I can go to the bathroom by myself, um, but putting on my shoes is very difficult. Using knives, plates, glasses, that's just not something you should, you should be doing, right? No. Because if you, with the OCD, you have to do things in threes, right? Mm-hmm. So if you pound a mug like you were saying and it breaks the first time 
if you hit yourself in the head with a mug and it breaks the first time, you're going to hit yourself with a jagged mug the next two times. Mm -hmm. Bad idea. Yeah. How is putting on makeup? I, I don't like doing it. It's very difficult. Well, here's a clip of that Balin shared of putting on her makeup. So I am back. I am feeling um, a lot better. So I figured I would do a video showing you um, how I do my makeup. I'm just going to casually... Um, that's also a new tip, just wanted to point that out. Um, um, you're done. You're done. Wind up. <laughs> On a day like that, how long does it take you? Maybe 30 minutes. But you get it done. I, I get it done, yeah. You want to be a nurse. I do want to be a nurse. Okay, and do you think that's a possibility for you? It's very hard for me to talk about because there is a possibility that I could and there is a possibility that it gets too bad to the point where I can't be one. It's something that means a lot to me because right. I've grown up very, very sick. Um, I have a lot of health issues, a lot of problems, and every time I went to the hospital or to a doctor's office, they've always done their best to make sure that I am comfortable i am welcome and i am happy where i am in my stay and i want to do that for other people balen says stress and anxiety make her physical You're and done. verbal tics worse we're going to You're talk done. about what those are uh because these things have a, a neurological basis although they can be triggered by stress <laughs> we're going to talk about what they're called and how they work when we come back captioning provided by Passion for it as you see it and understand it. Okay, got it. That's so awesome. Yeah, because you understand it. So you see the impact that you're having. It does have that impact on people. And this is something that, as I say, it does um, interact with different uh, other disorders like OCD, depression, and anxiety. And there are parts of it, coprolalia, which is a medical term to describe the involuntary, uncontrollable outburst of obscene words or socially inappropriate or derogatory remarks. And then there's copropraxia, which is related to the complex motor tic symptom, and that can involve obscene gestures. And these are neurobiological root cause for both symptoms and it kind of involves faulty wiring of the inhibitory mechanism in the frontal cortex of the brain and that does sometimes improve with age my medication the first medication i was on helped for everything it it made me 
function about, like a normal human being? For about four months. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the medical term for it. I mm -hmm. call it like resistant. I was like, oh, your body's just resistant to it now. Like, Yeah, and I don't she know. may well have built up a, a threshold right. where it. Where it's just. It's silly. Yeah. And you don't know, and you can't necessarily fix that by increasing the dosage because mm -hmm. the side effects then become. A, a problem, right? But there are different medications that you can rotate well, to, and there are some that are being developed. And you're open to trying different things, right? Yes. Like some transcranial magnetic stimulation mm -hmm. that's being done here in LA and at Stanford, and I'm really looking into that right now with some really world-class experts. And those are non-invasive, no downside whatsoever, right. and. We're really looking to see if we think that can, it can certainly help with the OCD and it can certainly help with the depression. Mm -hmm. And so if we get to the point where we feel like that could be helpful, then we're going to talk to you about that. You're done. How do you want people to react to you when you do have a tick, you, you do have a, a spontaneous verbalization? How, how do you want people to react? I'd appreciate it if people just pretended like it's not there. Um, but I know sometimes that's hard because I laugh at them. So I give, when I laugh, I give people permission to laugh. <clears throat> A lot of people don't know what to do. Yeah. And yeah. so it really helps for you to say if they just <gasps> want it up. Tend to pretend that it's not happening, not attend to it, and just continue to deal with you because it will pass and you can continue the conversation, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And, you know, in, in spite of it all, I feel like we've had a very intelligent and informative conversation <laughs> here today. Yes. Would you agree? Yes. I want you guys to be part of this conversation going forward because we're going to talk about uh, haters on the Internet and those mm -hmm. that have negative things to say, and I want you to be very much tuned into that. Uh, up next, a woman Balin uh, is a huge fan of, singer and social media influencer Lele Pons, who also struggles with OCD, Oof. Tourette's, and depression. Uh, how done. is she able to handle it with social You're media? Done. We're going to meet Lele next. is a force in social media, and now the 22-year-old has the most Instagram followers of any social media star. People think that I have a perfect life. The public only sees what I want them to see. The truth is, I've been diagnosed with OCD, Tourette's, anxiety, and depression. Surprising updates. Chase had dropped out of college and choked his psychiatrist. So what's happened since I saw you last? Well, from memorable guests. She was addicted to heroin and seven months pregnant. You not only delivered the baby, you... Catfished by the same man. He told me that he wanted to be honest with me. As opposed to before when he told you he was white and black and Craig and now Chris. That's tomorrow. Then on Friday. I need Dr. Phil. Everything in my body is shaking. Our mom and dad. You became concerned when he accidentally over-medicated her. Yes. Causing more anxiety. That's Friday. Closed caption here. Is everybody glad you came? Are you good? Well, just for being part of our audience today, we have a special gift for you. It's one of the hottest items on the market. It's called the Blendjet 2 Portable Blender. You can enjoy delicious and nutritious smoothies at home or on the run. It comes in a variety of colors and patterns along with a carrying case, recipe book, and an assortment of flavor protein packets to kickstart a weight loss journey or help you to eat more fruits and veggies. You'll stay fueled with protein and healthy nutrients any time of the day, no matter where you are. So go to blendjet.com to buy yours today. You guys don't have to because you're all going home with one. Okay? Enjoy your gift, everybody. When you see these pictures, what do you see? The perfect life, fame, happiness? Well, what is the reality behind these photos? Lele Pond started off posting funny content on Vine and ended up becoming huge on social media with over 43 million followers. Now, she has been able to chase her music career singing with artists such as the Black Eyed Peas, 
Neo and Diplo. Now, what she posts seems to be flawless, but Lele has been struggling with mental illness since she was nine years old. Down and Durable caught up with Insta influencer Lele Pond. That's right, guys. Lele is a force in social media. She's been posting since her teenage years, and now the 22-year-old has the most Instagram followers of any social media star, aside from Hollywood celebrities. I started my career on Vine, and I was the first person to reach a billion boots. <laughs> I transitioned from social media to music. People think that I have a perfect life. The public only sees what I want them to see. The truth is, I've been diagnosed with OCD, Tourette's, anxiety, and depression. My OCD has a lot to do with me repeating myself. Sorry, let me do it again. Sorry, again. Sorry, let me do it again. Sorry. If it doesn't sound right, it's not perfect in my head. You ask again and again and again. You touch multiple things, multiple times. One of the OCDs that I had was throwing the pencil. So I would throw the pencil and I had to grab it in a certain way, like, like this, and then it would, didn't feel right. So I would do this, do it again, pick it up, didn't feel right. There was one time and I was in the shower, turning on and off the shower handle. I was in the shower around like 45 minutes. I have a huge obsession to go and find negative comments. On a typical photo, I would get like, let's say 8,000 comments, and I would look through the comments until I found a negative comment. I read those comments again and again until it feels right. That obviously makes you doubt yourself and not like yourself because you're obsessed with reading bad things about you. The OCD triggers the depression, the depression triggers the anxiety. When I'm very anxious, I twitch a lot uh, like this. Social media, I am very grateful because it's giving me the success that I have today. But honestly, is it worth how my mental health has turned out through the years? No. Well, it's so good to meet you. Thank you. So amazing to meet you, too. Now, you, uh, you are huge on social media, and you say it's been both good and bad. Yes. I'm very grateful for everything that has come, opportunities, and I can't say I, I haven't enjoyed any of them because I have definitely been very happy. However, like, when it comes to stability, when it comes to what happens behind the scenes, it's the worst. Lily said she wanted to come clean about her mental health struggles and created a YouTube docu-series to share her real life with her fans. Here's a clip. My deepest, darkest secret is that I have OCD. I just have to do it one no, more no, time. Don't do it. Hold on to it. You can, you can. We're going to do it together. When I first met Lely, she came in as an emergency situation. I just had to touch everything, everything. And if I didn't touch everything, like, I thought my family was going to die. She couldn't really function. My OCD is very powerful thoughts that make me do stuff that I don't want to do. It got to a point that I could not move. My mind and my body shuts down because of my OCD. It's a struggle that is 24 hours a day. Do you want to take a break? Okay. That let people know it wasn't a perfect life. For people, it's like, no, 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 you can't have this because all this, all these years you haven't shown that. And uh, you were watching when Balin was on and you, you <laughs> see what she's going through. You relate to that. Yes, I think that what she's doing is brilliant. I love how she turned something, a struggle, into something positive. And she's a hero to many people. This yeah. is why I want, like, this is why I did it, to be someone like her. Yeah. She's, a, yeah. she's an inspiration. Yeah, the, the two of y'all are making a huge, a huge difference. <laughs> Up next, Lady says her Tourette's are milder than her OCD, but depression is actually her worst battle. Yeah. We're going to talk about all of that next. <laughs> Text Phil to 88500. That's Phil to 88500. When I get a migraine, I shut up. Season 20, and we could not do it without you. Now that some of the COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted, we can have a studio audience back. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and would like to attend a taping, go to drphil.com and click on Be Part of the Audience and select In Studio. Tickets are free, and we can't wait to see you here. 
I was diagnosed with depression many years ago, and I feel like there's people that think that because I have this life, fame, and money, I shouldn't be depressed. Well, I am. When you're depressed, sometimes you don't even have a reason, you know? And, and, and you're like, why are you so depressed? Why are you sad? You have everything. You're so ungrateful. But depression isn't about appreciation. It's about a mental health disorder. Well, Lily says one of her biggest OCD triggers is comparing herself to others and reading negative comments on social media, which can put her into a deep depression. When you talk about the impact of the haters, the negative people, the, the ones that go on there and, and talk trash, you say you actually seek those yes. comments out. I want to look for them. It's, a, it's an obsession that I have. It's called, it's like the need to know. It's part of the OCD. It's like just right. the need to tell, the need to know. I need to know who's talking about me bad. I need to know. And I go and look for them until I find them. It's like an obsession, it's like a ritual every single day. Once, like, well, not once a day, many times an hour I do it. Yeah, and do you have to find three comments? Yes, I let these people control me and control my day. And yeah. at the end, I'm never gonna even remember them. Do you read negative comments? Yeah. Yeah. Do you seek them out? Mm -hmm. And there's been a, a lot of actual psychological research into these people that post, these trolls post inflammatory, off-topic, insincere messages to hurt, provoke others, and they typically hide behind fake names or phony accounts. Yeah. And it's it's really interesting that their makeup is antisocial and sadistic. Something that, sir, you said that was very, very honest and very true was that he says that there's good comments, there are negative comments, and there are evil comments. And when I say there's a difference between evil and negative. Negative yeah. might be someone gives an opinion. I don't like you. You're not funny. Mm -hmm. You're not pretty. You are whatever they think that you are. I don't like you. And there's others that are like... Can you just die? I wish your mom got cancer that I get, you know? Yeah. And what yeah. is that? Well, those that's... are the those are the evil people. Yes. And yeah, that's not yeah. These are the people that actually are so sick mm -hmm. they feel good about themselves for inflicting pain. And it's something called the dark triad. Mm -hmm. They ha they have narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. And there's something called Schadenfreude. And it's when you are, joy is derived by someone from another person's misfortune. Yes. So it's this dark triad. These are people you don't want to meet in real life. No. They're, Thank God I've never met one yeah, of them. Yeah, they're ugly people. And they will go virtual to real world sometimes. So you've got to be careful. Yeah. So should Lele stay off social media in order to stay well? Uh, she's asked herself that before, yeah. but there's been huge upsides to it as well. We'll talk about that next. Do you struggle with the case? Subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on DrPhil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. If you had this to do all over again, if you went back to day one, if you knew then what you know now, would you do it? Uh, I, I would have, I would have um, done it differently for sure. Uh, when I started, I was not taking my medication. I was not going to therapy. I, I'm gonna say I thought I was too cool, and I was like, I don't need that anymore. Went to LA. And my whole world went crashing down. Like, uh, depression came, my OCD got worse. When your OCD gets worse, when your depression gets worse, anxiety, then you become tired. And then my t Tourette's came a little bit stronger. So I think that I would change that. Because I do love my life, right? But I do did make a lot of mistakes due to the fact that I didn't put my, myself first when it came to mental health, and I was not stable. That's, and that has been so hard for me to, like, you know, like recover all these years. So I think that just like focusing more on myself and not being so caught up with, oh my God, I'm famous, I'm rich. That is such a big mistake. Like mental health is first. For me, it doesn't define you. 
Like what you have doesn't define you. You're that it makes you special. It's who you are. And that's something that Bailey, you've done. You made this super special. You made you made uh, like something beautiful, beautiful out of this. And that's the best thing you can do, you know? Mm. And I'm very proud of you for that. You know, that's so important for you to talk about. And you know, that's Robin's message that she's been beating the drum on for decades. No matter what else happens, take care of yourself yes. first because you can't give away what you don't have. Yeah. If you don't take care of yourself, uh, you're going to wind up emotionally bankrupt. Yes. And then you've got nothing to give to yourself, to those you love, to anybody. And mm -hmm. your point is don't feel selfish about it, right? That's right. You can't feel guilty about taking care of yourself yes. because you're doing it for a, for a reason, for a purpose, mm -hmm. for, your, for your own well-being, for your life, so you live longer, so you can take care of others, I've, so you can take care of those you love. The, the last year... I've been more off social media. And people have noticed, where is she? You're not posting as much. And I've been the happiest. Your message is great. And that is, you, you would do it different. You would have taken care of yourself. You would have focused on your mental health. And Balin's message is saying, I'm not going to hide with this. I'm going to own it and put mm -hmm. it out there. And don't you guys think both are really giving a great, great message? So uh, I, I, I thank you both. And I, 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 I can't. Thank you enough for your message and Valen for yours. And uh, I, I hope you uh, follow these folks and and you heed the message because it's so important. You've inspired millions of people and don't hope that those haters are right because they're not. To all of you here at home in the audience, in the virtual audience, don't feed the haters, just ignore them. They'll go find somebody else. It's like poking a bear with a stick. They want a reaction. When they don't get one, they go on. Yeah. So, all right. For more information about today's episode, log on to drphil.com. Uh,